Hello, and welcome to another episode of Risky Business. I apologize again, I still have a kinky sore, so it's a little difficult for me to talk, but I'm trying my best anyway. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to continue where we left off uh, yesterday, which uh, we were working on uh, debugging Milton, and we had a seg fault here. And I'm pretty sure I realized the problem like right after I stopped the stream yesterday. I think uh, I think it's just us being stupid. <laughs> so when we do get time of day, I was thinking about local time, how it uses a statically uh, allocated structure. So you just uh, get the pointer out of it right but um with get time of day it actually it's not like giving us a pointer of already allocated memory so we need to do this right which is pretty obvious but I believe that's uh, what our problem was So I think we want something like that. So it seems to be working so far. When it comes to undo, oh cool, we can undo stuff that we had from a previous session. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. Um, Oh, so E does eraser, and then you can say B, and it does your brush. That's pretty cool, too. So... That little X doesn't work. <laughs> Let's do back quote to toggle it. That works. Interesting. So yeah, if I just uh, draw something, close Milton, start Milton, and we still have everything. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, 
there's not much else I want to do. Like, I started implementing these dialogues. Like, if you do save, you can save a custom canvas out. But it's uh, it's not like fully implemented. Oh, open seg faulted it. So I don't know if we want to finish up. those implementations. Honestly, I don't really feel like it because we don't need it if we have persistence, right? So like, why would I need to use the save dialog if I can just do this, right? Just close it and reopen it and there it is. So, I kind of want to back out my changes from the dialogue stuff and just submit a pull request of the the stuff that gets the persistence working. So let's take a moment here and review the changes we've made. Oh yeah, I did that. I think I'm going to remove the commented out line that I put in the platform.h. All right, we need to do this. I don't know if Sergey is going to do that or not. We should probably implement that if we're going to submit a pull request. And I need to change this. So Sergey's suggestion was to use get env. Seems good to me.
So that seems to be working. Uh, he goes by Sergey, uh, just S E R G I E. Yeah, but I believe his name is uh, Sergio. I don't know if that's the pronunciation, but yeah. But uh, I think he just goes by Sergey. I met him at Handmade Con. And I believe he went by Sergey. <laughs> I could be totally wrong though. He hasn't corrected me on it if 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 that's not the case. <laughs> So I think platform fname at config should create the folder if it does not exist. I also think it should um, do the xdg home stuff if it exists too. So like um, So I have like uh, I guess it should use xdg data home or maybe it should use xdg cache home. I feel like data would be the more appropriate one. So I want to say like if xdg data home exists then I uh, use that otherwise use uh, just normal home. So I think we're just going to say like um, Or let's just call it home and say
and then we're gonna want to create the directory if it does not exist so let me uh, reference my Linux book here So there's a maker function. And I believe the correct way to do this would be to try to make the directory every time uh, rather than checking to see if it exists before you try to make it because that introduces a race condition where you could uh, delete the directory uh, after it uh, checks to see that it exists. So it'll say it exists, but then it gets deleted and then the program goes on thinking it exists and uh, would not work. So, uh, make if if it does if it does exist, it'll just return a uh, error code saying that it exists. Right. There is this uh, e exist.
So it takes a uh, path and a mode. So where are the mode options specified? Take a look in the Linux book again. Page 295. Okay, here we go. So permissions for directories. Read means the directory may be listed. Write means files may be created and removed from the directory. Execute means files within the directory may be accessed. So if we take a look here, we see normally a directory uh, is uh, read, write, execute, uh, execute, read, and execute. And that order is I believe it's user group other, right?
So I'm pretty sure that's right. So we are going to set um, Well, first of all, let's do Well, let's see. The length that we have there is for the entire thing. So wait a minute, what is this doing with the string copy? Oh, that's the name of the, okay. Gotcha. So I guess it's fine to copy the whole length because it's null terminated. So I guess I should just do an SN printf here, shouldn't I? gonna make that and we're gonna say we want uh, user read Uh, user right user execute group read
group execute, excuse me, uh, and then other execute. I'm pretty sure that's what we want, right? Well, now this one says read write search permissions for our owner and group and read search permissions for others. S I R W X U. Oh, okay. It says, uh, in addition to the constant shown in table 15.4, three constants are defined to equate to mass for all three permissions for each of the categories, owner, group, and other. SIRWXU, SIRWXG, and SIRWXO. Gotcha. So in that case, we're going to say we want we want execute on op three. So we're going to do IRWX or no that uh, that's all three permissions permissions on each so we want that for a user so IRWXU So I think this is what we want right here Now I think I can just say
I don't know if FNAME lets you, uh, or I mean if SNPrintf lets you reference the thing you're writing into. <laughs> It would probably be more appropriate to do like a string cat, I don't know. Although I do want to put in the directory separator. Yeah, since C11, they've specified restrict on the buffer and the format, which means it's expecting it not to overlap. So we can't do it this way. <laughs> So I guess the cleanest way to do this would just be to do two string cats, right? So yeah, I think I'm just going to do a uh, string cat of name.
something like this. And I guess if we're going to keep consistent with the platform at fname at exe, I see they're doing something similar here. So I'm just going to use the full length of the buffer as the uh, safety thing. Technically, this code is, code is uh, a little bit wrong if you're using the full length of the buffer because this number refers to the source, which is this. So, uh, it's saying that you can write at most buffer length like the length of f name from the source into f name. But we're just going to leave it as it is. So where are those identifiers defined? Let's just man it. Really, no manual entry. Okay, it says right here sysstat.h define some. So those must be typos. All right, now uh, I want to test that, so so this is what it looked like before, or I suppose I should so. This is what we're expecting. I don't know why it seems like it caches this. Huh. 
huh, maybe we actually didn't write a dot melt in. Well, it saved it somewhere. <laughs> um, oh, right, because I'm using XGG. So, um, Yeah, but in that case, I don't want it to have the dot in front. So I'm going to say We're going to have a folder and we're going to say So first of all, Uh, so it looks like I forgot to give it read permissions for group. Or wait, no, this is for other. My bad. I misread this. So there's read permissions for group, but there's also read permissions for other. Gotcha. So let's see here. This is the correct thing we want.
There we go. Perfect. So, we got that going. Let's go back to reviewing what we were doing. So I believe I have a local commit here that's um, yeah. So I have a nightly commit. So I think I kind of want to cherry pick stuff from this because we do want to keep this this is probably worth keeping around um, I don't know, maybe we should just finish it up since we implemented so much of this already. I feel like it would be kind of a waste to just revert out this code. And I believe we are just about out of time. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to um, uh, call what we have now good, but we're going to finish up implementing these uh, dialogues that I started. Um, because we should probably do that. <laughs> I don't want to just throw away this code. Like, I'm not going to submit a pull request for code that's half finished, you know? But I don't want to just throw away all the work we did either. So we might as well finish it up tomorrow, and then we can submit a pull request with all the changes we've made. And then after that, we're going to implement uh, two custom features. And then we can move on to RISC-V stuff. So 
That should be fun. But that'll be... I don't know how long. <laughs> Hopefully we can finish up the dialogues tomorrow. I don't know if we can or not, but we'll find out. So anyway, thank you everyone who watched today. The chat wasn't super active today, but I see that uh, people were people were around at least joining and partying. So I appreciate the viewership for those of you that tuned in. And um, as always, I appreciate those who view on the YouTube archive, risky.tv. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And stay risky, everyone. <laughs>